in the name of the Father, Most High Yah, in the name of his son, Messiah, Yahweh Shah, to all of the people under the sound of my voice who are seeking to use every breath that they have to bring glory and honor to the Most High Father, Yah, by obedience to his covenant. Shabbat Shalom and greeting to you. Today, we're going to be studying Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42 is our study for today. Now, we have been studying Isaiah and um, we're going to continue to do that. As we're looking at Isaiah chapter 42, I just want to remind us of a few things. First of all, again, let's look at Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Uh, scripture that I go over quite a bit. But there's a reason for that. Because as human beings, we forget. That's why uh, in, even in the covenant, the Most High has the word remember. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom Isha. My Isha. Shabbat Shalom uh, Cornelius. Um, even in the covenant. The Most High has the word remember in it because uh, his people tend to forget. Our minds have been dulled since after the flood. And so we tend to forget. And because of that, he, off, he says for us to remember. Now, with that in mind, I'm looking at Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. And, of course, we're going to begin at verse 1. I'm going to repeat verse 1 which is the Bible definition of the purpose of prophecy. The Bible definition of the purpose of prophecy. We're going into Isaiah chapter 42 today. And before we do that, I want to go over this background. Bible definition of the purpose of prophecy. All right, let's take a look. Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ or Messiah Yahweh Shai, which Yah gave unto him, by the way, instead, when I see the word Jesus Christ, I say Messiah, Yahweh Shah, which is his true Hebrew name. And of course, I try not to use the word God because God is not a name. God is a title and it's a generic title. Anything can be God. This bottle of water can be God. Yeah. A person can be God. Anything can be God. So we use his name because we have been taught by him in his word, his name. By looking into the Hebrew of the word God and Lord, we see Yahweh is his name. So we use the word Yah, which is short for Yahweh. Yah is 3050. You know, it's in the Hebrew, which is the shortened form of his true name, which is Yahweh. Okay. So, uh, of course, in English, they say Jehovah, just so that those won't be confused. Jehovah is not his name because there is no such thing as the letter J. In Hebrew, there is no letter J in Hebrew, okay? J came in English about 500 years ago. At the time of Moses receiving this, this word, it did not exist. So it would be therefore impossible for any, any letter J to have appeared in the Bible. In fact, in the original King James Version, there was no letter J. They used the I-E sound to make ya or ya sound. So his real name is Yahweh, not Yahweh, although I won't condemn anybody that uses the word Yahweh because there's no A, Yahweh, way sound in the Bible. It's Ah, Yahweh. Ah is the common sound that, are, that is after the letters. There's no uh, other vowels except with the exception of I, which also is uh, the other sound that you have. So you have Ah and I. There is no E sound in the Hebrew. So um that's why when you look at the letters, there's Y-H-W-H, but after each, there's the sound ah, which is normal, okay? Yahawa. all right? That's how we get Yahweh. And his son, Yahawa Shai, Yahawa Shai, 3068 uh, in, the, in the Hebrew. The word Shai, I at the end, um, which would be Yahawa Shai, ah, but, you know, Yahweh Shai, but the A is silent on the last letter of a word, of any word, the, the A sound is silent. So you have Yahweh Shai. I don't know why people ignore that I sound, but anyway, that's what I'm convicted on. Revelation chapter one and verse one. The revelation of Messiah, Yahweh Shai, which Yah gave unto him to show unto his servants. 
things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. This time, as I'm looking at this and I'm presenting it to you, the, the reason for it is because I want to express if prophecy is, is given from the Father, the revelation of Jesus Christ or Yahweh Shai Messiah, which Yah gave unto him. So this is, is expressing to us that the Messiah received a revelation of himself from his father. The revelation of Messiah, which Yah gave unto him. So the father gave Messiah a revelation of Messiah. Okay. And then the Bible says to show unto his servants. He gave a revelation of Messiah to Messiah to show unto his servants. What? Things which must shortly come to pass. I want to express, which we're going to also express in the next verse we read in Revelation chapter one, that we must understand or it, sh it will help us. It will comfort us, I suggest, for us to understand that nothing surprises the father. Nothing surprises him. Why is that? The next verse in Revelation chapter one. Messiah is talking to Yaconan, who is John. And we're going to start reading at verse 17. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. I'm going to read verse 17 and 18. Okay. When I saw him, Yaconan reports, I fell at his feet as dead. And he, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death, the first and the last. See, Alpha and Omega, first and last. How is it Messiah is Alpha and Omega, and his father is also Alpha and Omega? Because Messiah is everything his father has or knows he shares with Messiah. And whatever his father doesn't share with him, Messiah tells us. For example, when Messiah walked to earth, he did not know the exact day of his coming because he said nobody knows except the father. But of course, logically speaking, if Messiah is going to return, there's going to come a time when father is going to let him know. Right. So the father did not let him know why he's standing on the earth. But at some point, father is going to let him know, son, it's time to go back to earth and deliver my people, all right? So at some point, Messiah will know. And guess what? Messiah said to the disciples, all things that my father shows me, I have shared with you. Therefore, when Messiah is getting the word from the father as to his return, he's gonna, that is Messiah gonna turn around, send an angel with that information to us and share it with us. And I am noticing that as we get closer to the return of the Messiah, more and more information is being revealed to us about that. But that's not what we're talking about here. What I wanted to express here right now is that as servants of Yah, the Father, who pray to the Father with an intercessor who is Messiah, as our high priest and our righteousness, as these servants, as it becomes our goal in this life to give Father all the glory. And of course, in doing so, we receive a Father's spirit because the greatest way we can show the Father glory is by obeying him, which is what Messiah said. If ye love me, keep my commandments as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, keep my commandments, in abiding my love. So if we really love the father, we will obey him. In order to obey him, we need his spirit. Okay. Now, father will let Messiah know to tell us whatever we need to know that's getting ready to happen. To show unto his servants things that must shortly come to pass. So whatever comes, whatever it is, COVID virus or whatever comes in the future, whatever calamities come, 
Father already knew about it. And the reason I bring that up is because Father doesn't react to events on planet Earth. Let me just say that again. Father doesn't react to events on planet Earth. He does not react. As a matter of fact, what we need to understand, and I want to make sure you're here, what we need to understand, brothers and sisters, is our Satan reacts to what he sees Father do. See, that's what we need to understand. Father doesn't react to Asatan's actions on planet Earth. When Asatan brings forth an evil disease or he causes death or destruction in one place or another, or Asatan brings corruption to the government that we all of a sudden find out about years later, that does not surprise the Father. And everything Asatan is doing is a reaction to what he sees the Father do. And let me give you an example of that. This coronavirus and the, and the killing and the murdering of, of Hebrew men in the United States of America, which is something that has been going on on this land for more than 400 years. For more than 400 years. which is something that has been going on on this land for more than 400 years. The father already knew about it. And the father at this point in history, the reason it's happening right now is because Asatan is reacting because he sees the father bringing forth his truth and awakening his true people. Asatan is reacting to the awakening. It's not... The, the father is preparing things in reaction to what Asatan is doing. We need to understand Asatan is reacting to what he sees the father doing. He understands there's 144,000 males. He knows we're the true Hebrews, the descendants of slaves. He understands that our awakening is his death now. So in that understanding, when he sees these truths being awakened in us, as the Bible says, when my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether Yahweh thy most high have scattered thee, and thou shalt return unto Yahweh thy most high with all thy heart and with all thy soul, thou and thy children, that then Yahweh will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations with Yahweh thy most high. Have driven thee. That's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1, 2, and 3. So, brothers and sisters, the Bible is showing Asatan as well as us. We must understand, Asatan knows the Bible. He reads it. It's unfortunate that he reads it more than people that say they believe it. It's unfortunate. Because all of Yah's true people are going to live by his word. His word, there's a there's a there's a prayer in the Psalm. There's a prayer in the Psalms. I believe it's Psalm 119, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look at that. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. It says, order my steps in your word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Order my steps in your word. That means the chosen people. Our desire is to have our steps, our life, our lifestyle ordered after the word of the most high. See? So that his word becomes more important to us. Now, Asatan knows this. So what is his reaction to that? His reaction is to try to confuse us, to try to discourage us from the word, to try to confuse us and discourage us. How? He brings forth as many false teachers as he can, saying different things in a very convincing manner so that if you are not smart enough, or should I say, have enough sense to ask the father to get on your knees and say, father, is this true? And to search his word for yourself to find out if things that you're hearing are true. 
If you if you're just going to believe what somebody says to you without investigating for yourself, you're going to be confused. And that's the design. That's Asatan's reaction to what he sees the father doing. Okay, that's his reaction to what he sees the father doing. So that being the case, I'm trying to still find this thing here. I haven't found it yet. I'm not going to look for, oh, there it is. It's Psalm 119, 133. Psalm 119, 133. Order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. That's the prayer. And that goes also with Romans. That goes with Romans. That, that is actually a sister verse to Romans. Romans, let's see there, chapter six, Romans chapter six. Yes, sir. Romans chapter six, verse 14 is the sister verse to Psalm 119, verse 133. Notice Romans chapter six and verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. And let's compare that. What it say here? Order my steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over you. You say, how is that six of us when one of them is talking about you're not under the law? You're under grace. What it's saying is you're not under the condemnation of Yah's law. And because of the grace given to him, given to you through his spirit, you're in harmony with the law. That's called righteousness by faith. That is where Yah covers your sin with his righteousness. And by his spirit causes you to have power to obey. Order my steps in your word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the condemnation of the law, but you're under the power of his grace. The grace that's given to us is something we don't deserve. It is a gift of his righteousness. That's what Romans says. That's what Psalm says. That's what Ezekiel says. It's a gift of his righteousness. And the purpose of that gift is to cause us to be obedient. Back to Romans. Chapter, let's continue reading. We only read one verse. Let's continue reading. Romans. Let's, let's read from verse 12, let's read from verse 12, because we don't read verse 14, so let's read around it, you know, the verses before and behind. So let's read verse 12 and go from verse 12 down to verse 18. Yeah, yeah, from 12 to 18, because it, it kind of explains everything I just said in, in context, see? Let not therefore sin reign in your mortal body. Sin, remember, is the transgression of Yah's law. So you let not transgression reign in your mortal body, that ye shall obey it in the lust thereof, that ye should obey transgression, that ye should obey rebellion against the creator. Let not that reign in your mortal body. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. So he's telling you, don't give yourself over to be an instrument of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves to Yah as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Yah. So how do you yield your, your body as your members, right? How do you yield your body as instrument of righteousness to the creator? By receiving his spirit. By receiving his spirit. You give his, yourself to him by repentance. Repentance says, I'm wrong and I need your help. I cannot make it without you. I'm wrong. I need to change and I cannot make it without you. That's repentance. And he says, okay, in the name of my son, here's my spirit. I'm putting my spirit on you and I'm taking your sin away. Because my son has paid the penalty for your sin. He became sin for you that you might become righteousness in him. So that's the word of power. So he says, he gives you his spirit. And now your desire is to obey him. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Yah forbid. 
Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Obedience to what? Brothers and sisters, the main thing we're supposed to be obedient to is his covenant. He will write his law in our hearts. He will cause us to walk in his commandments and keep his statutes and do them. That's what the Bible says. Obedience to his law. So when we yield ourselves to be servants of righteousness by his spirit, by faith, we are no longer given over to unrighteousness and sin. Now that doesn't mean we're not tempted to sin. We are tempted every day. We're going to be tried all the time. Satan is allowed to do that. Why? Because as we are tempted, we go to the Father. And ask for the power of his spirit to give him glory. For his own name's sake, he will do it. He will deliver us for his own name's sake. So it's not about whether we ourselves are good. That's why he said, to whom you yield yourself servants to obey. Are you yielding yourself to self? Are you yielding yourself to the father? If you're yielding yourself to the Father, you're giving Father permission to put his spirit on you. If you're yielding yourself to self, you're giving us a time permission to take you over. Because one of them is going to do what they do. One of them is going to. This is a spiritual war that we are in. Okay? So one of them is going to be doing their business on you. Either the Father is going to be putting his spirit and covering you, causing you to be obedient to his covenant, or Asatan is going to let you think you're in control. And that's when you're really in trouble. And if you have any experience, you know I'm telling the truth. But y'all be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin. See? Y'all's spiritual power. His spirit of perfect righteousness breaks the chains of sin off the receiver. Being made free from sin, he became servants of righteousness. Order my steps in your word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Praise the most high for his word. So that being the case, what we are seeing and what we're going to continue to see going forward is Asatan's reaction to what he sees happening with the father. You see, Asatan runs to and fro on earth. That's what he said in the book of Job. He runs to and fro on earth. He runs up and down in it. He has a third of heaven's fallen angel with him. And they know all about you. They know all about me. We are concerned with, some people are concerned with surveillance from the FBI, CIA, NSA. Like they surveil Brother Malcolm X or they surveil Martin Luther King or they surveil Fred Hampton. We're not concerned with that in these last days. You know why? Because we're being surveilled by our father. We're being surveilled by angels that excel in strength, that do Yah's commandments and hearken to the voice of his word. We're being surveilled by them. So therefore, we're not concerned with our enemy surveillance at all. Yah can cause them to see or not to see what he wants them to see. You understand? He can cause them to see or not to see. See, we have to learn our father. I just told you some things about him that I hope you keep for yourself. Number one, nothing surprises him. He's alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. Nothing surprises him. Number two, everything you see happening on this earth that's evil is a response from Asatan to what he knows the father is doing. Right now, the father is busy preparing his 144,000 to, to receive his permanent seal. His permanent seal of perfect righteousness. He's preparing them to do that. Asatan sees it. He knows it. And so in private, there's a war going on behind the scenes between the 144,000 and, and the imps of Asatan. Constant battle, constant temptation, constant prayer. There's a battle going on. 
that you can't see on CNN. You can't see on MSNBC or Fox News. But there's a battle. The real battle is going on. Asatana sees it. And he can tell he's losing. He can tell he's losing. Because Father's going to be successful in placing his spirit on his people. He said in Revelation, hold the winds until I seal my servants with their fore in their foreheads. His word shall not return unto him void. There's another promise for you. Isaiah chapter 55. His word shall not return unto him void. But it shall accomplish the thing which he pleases. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto he sent. So let us never forget, nothing surprises our God. And everything you see is a reaction. See, brothers and sisters, like last Friday, my wife and I were staying in Hell's Kitchen last Friday. I'm back in the D.C. area now. But last Friday, we were staying in Hell's Kitchen. Okay? And boy, did we have a time. When we got into New York, trying to find... <laughs> Trying to get to the to the parking place, got to the finally got to the parking place, and this is it wasn't even a lot of traffic. It was just the way the streets were blocked off and everything. And then we finally got to the parking place, and I couldn't pull up the app to show the man my, that I had prepaid for the parking. And then when we got inside the place, which we asked the Airbnb, we, we designated, we specifically chose a non-smoking place. Place smelled like somebody had a a, a, a cigarette and, and a marijuana party in. It smelled so bad, so strong. Then I had pre-ordered some food for us to, for, for, to, to be delivered there. And about 10 minutes before it was supposed to be delivered, we get a call from the restaurant saying, oh, we're not bringing that food. We don't have that special order for you. So we had to go to the restaurant, which proceeded to see a man fall out in the street and then proceeded to see four men jump him. It was an interesting Friday. And I bring this up for you to understand that me and my wife understood Asatan was trying his best to discourage us and mess us up for Friday. Why? Because he knew the Sabbath was coming. He wanted to mess our minds up on the Friday. He always tries to do that. And then he knew specifically me, I was going to be teaching. And you know what? I was so discouraged. I felt like not doing the study. But then I knew what was going on. So I went forward anyway. And as it turned out, it was a blessing to many. And I praise y'all for that. But see, that's the battle that's going on all the time. And we are not surprised, nor are we ignorant of Asatan's devices. So that is why you're seeing an uptick in aggression against so-called black males. Let me say it again. You're seeing an uptick in aggression against black males. This is for two purposes. The most high purpose is to tell us this is Asatan's reaction. In other words, my people, wake up. Wake up. These people hate you. You're not Americans. They're never going to be on your side. And for secondly, Asatan's going to use this. Let me tell you, once they put all these brothers in jail, they put half of them or all of them in jail that did all these murders to, to uh, Mr. Uh, Ahmed Aubrey and, and Brianna, Sister Brianna, and then Brother Floyd. When they put these boys in jail, these redneck, ignorant people, they're going to act like they did us a favor. But they ain't do nothing for us. They can't pay us back. You know what it would have cost? Think about this. 250 years of free labor. This just Can you imagine? Listen to me carefully. If you, you, had 5 million people working for you for free. I mean, planting fields for you. Uh, gathering the crops in preparing cotton and tobacco and, and corn and vegetables for free. I mean, you barely got, you got to bear, you, you give them the leftover of your food. That's how you feed them. You give them the leftover of your food. And they working for you from before the sun rises to when the sun sets. And you give them the leftover. You eat your pig and you give them the insides that you don't want. You eat your, your beef, you give them the insides you don't want. And they slaughter the animal.